Live from San Jose, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE. Covering Hadoop Summit 2016, brought to you by Hortonworks. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Silicon Valley in, in San Jose for Hadoop Summit 2016. This is Silicon Angle Media's flagship program, The Cube, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, George Gilbert, Silicon Angle Wikibon Analyst and Big Data. Our next guest is Kenneth Butow and Jay Etchings, Director of Operations and Director of Computational Science at, at Arizona State. You guys uh, doing some great stuff here. First of all, talk about what you talked about here in your talks here at Hadoop Summit because this is the value of the data. You got the perfect storm of compute in the cloud, lower cost, Moore's laws kicked in for years. Where's it going next? What's, what are you guys talking about here? Well, to me, it's all about how this platform is transforming the work we do. That it's actually allowing us to really ask and answer questions that we just simply wouldn't be able to approach in the absence of having these kinds of capabilities. I've, I've been in the field for a little while, as you might <laughs> speculate from my uh, from my literally gray beard, uh, but uh, but we're actually really at an inflection point where we're, where we really can, uh, by leveraging these computational tools, do just what examples did you use on stage? Share. Share with the audience, and take a minute to share some of the examples you guys are doing, some of the work you're doing that wasn't possible before, that wasn't really there, possible well, before. Well, the key thing that we're able to do is really fully explore this multi-dimensional space, all of the different components of the molecular characteristics, the, you know, the, the wet sequencing of, of individuals, and connect it in ways that hasn't been done before. So we, we were talking about, on stage, talking about how we were doing this in breast cancer, trying to better understand understand how the cancer is fundamentally different than the other normal uh, tissues and being able to find patterns that, again, similar to what people are doing in e-commerce and what they're doing in all sorts of other dimensions, we're actually trying to bring down to biomedicine. And Jay, the machine learning involved in all this stuff, what's the technology? Is it just blocking and tackling, just raw compute meets data? So, so I'll say, you know, typically in research institutions like Arizona State University, uh, there are a lot of disparate silos of compute that, that perform very uh, unique and specialized tasks. Uh, you know, bringing in uh, the data intensive environment and bringing in the Hadoop ecosystem has allowed us to bring those those elements together and, and optimize them. So there's, there's three places there when you look at uh, uh, you know, the ability to ask new questions and, and, and do new research, uh, the ability to reduce the time to research by taking legacy jobs that used to run in silos and optimizing them, and then as Ken said, the, the ability to mine uh, perhaps non-obvious relationships through machine learning from the large silos of data that we've now aggregated. So how did you guys get here? I mean, this is, I mean, obviously the work you're doing, but from a technology standpoint, you just, the truck back up and you got boatloads of clusters of Hadoop. Share us inside the, 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 the ropes of what you guys are doing. <laughs> so, uh, Ken and I started working together, it's got to be now three, four years ago. Uh, we were working on a, a specific project around some uh, uh, big data precision medicine in the cloud and how we would extend this out and, and uh, show Shortly after I accepted an appointment as the director of research computing, and we went on to take a plan that had been theorized back in 2012 called the NGCC, which is the Next Generation Cyber Capabilities, which is a single unified fabric that has the components of computational uh, compute within it, uh, Hadoop, and some, some big data capacity as well, and also including things like GPU compute, putting them all on a singular fabric. So uh, in starting four years ago and, and kind of building this at the university, uh, it's, it's only been over the past year and a half, two years, that we've really started to, to mine some gold from that infrastructure. It, we're here quite intentionally, so this isn't actually one of the things that just something fell off the truck yeah. and we actually put it in place. Actually, the, uh, credit where credit's due, ASU leadership actually recognized that we want to be the new American university uh, and to actually uh, support uh, our, uh, our design uh, aspirations of transdisciplinary research and the capacity to to look at problems in ways that no other groups do. We actually were going to have to have leading, leading edge technology. We were going to have to have the right tool set to do it. So we were charged with saying, if you know, if you wanted to be approaching 
these complex problems in the 21st century, what would be the what would be the infrastructure that you would need? And, and you guys creating it. And you guys felt this guiding principle, obviously the compute's key and having the data. Did you guys feel from the beginning that the answer was in the data? Did you guys have that idea in mind? Like, hey, this you know, there could be gold in those hills there. And did you go in with that with that kind of mindset from the beginning? Was that the original idea? Cer certainly. So uh, there are many large-scale studies and there's there, there are many large-scale data repositories uh, that have a, you know potential gold mine of, of information hidden within. However, none of those interoperate with one another, and they they exist as silos. And yeah. so the approach of what we're doing at the at Arizona State University is to bring them together and to essentially shine the light on on all this data and, and uh, uh, not only reduce time to research but yeah. but find interesting facts That's we wouldn't know. Exciting. So, uh, two questions that may be related. Are you able to bring those silos of data together after the fact? And, and would you compare this ability to generate data on your observations to sort of like the new, a new version of a microscope or a telescope? So what are the new things you so, can see? So funny you should say, we actually, uh, one of the metaphors we use for the NGCC is actually that it is, uh, it is, it is the next generation uh, telescope. It is the actually next generation observatory. Uh, and, it, and like many other fields that are transformed by having these new instruments, we actually think that having this data um, ex examination capabilities is just as powerful as that. And so, so to the original question, for, we for sure think the answer is in the data, but number two, we actually think that figuring out novel ways to actually yeah. parse this stuff apart is going to be what's critical to actually I mean, answering these The telescope, is a, I love that analogy because the observation space has to be uh, set up in order to observe. Yeah, right. So if you, know, if you have the silo problem, healthcare has been living this problem for a freaking decade. I mean, it's a nightmare, right? So. How do you open it up? What, have you had resistance? Was it like, yeah, you guys are heroes? Is there a parade for you guys every day? So, so the challenge is still very real in biomedicine, and I want to be absolutely crisp that there is no, sadly, no magic in how stuff comes together. The, the big data frameworks give us a platform that reduces the fiction, friction as much as is practical, but assembling heterogeneous data still has all of the complexity and the hard work of how you're figuring out interconnecting things that, that... So there's that, some brute force involved. There, there still is real human effort and decoding yeah. and recoding and... Uh, but again, with new machine learning and the analytics yeah. for discovering, you know, latent semantic patterns and all sorts of other things, we can bring powerful tools to find things that might be able to be connected, but I don't want to right, dis so discount the, the sweat equity. So, so to follow on to that, what I would say, and, and with the... Uh, with the innovation that the Hadoop ecosystem has, has brought to the university, it's reduced that that barrier to entry to get in these diverse data types, and it's become less of a technical challenge than it was before, and, and much more of a collective action problem, because now there are still uh, institutions out there that are developing their, their one-off proprietary databases and would, would love you to send them all your metadata, all your genomic data, uh, and, and I just don't think that that's the way of the future. So we maintain uh, copy of thousand genomes, uh, the cancer genome atlas, uh, plus we have a, a wide variety of research data that we have within our institution that's now available to all the researchers at the university. And you need access to more diverse data types. It could be everything from weather data, okay. geography of the patient, yeah. I mean, all kinds yeah. of weird kind of, things that of affect, observational yeah. data yeah. points Certainly. to have visibility, and you can't yeah. look at something that you have no data. So I got to ask you the question. So there is some brute force, and yes, there's some things that is getting better. What would you guys say is to the audience watching, because this is so fascinating, it's a real life example of the value to society with, with this, this kind of uh, platform and the way you guys are thinking about it. But what's exciting you right now about some of the advances going on in the technology space here? Because like, it's only going to get better. And where is you see the acceleration of new things? What gets you excited right now? And where's the problem areas where, come on, go faster? <laughs> well, we, we actually might have a little bit of a different answer here, but I would say that the most exciting component that I've seen even over the past year is the emphasis both at the federal level and at the research institution level around open source. So uh, 
in the past, if we were to develop something uh, and we were to do it on a particular platform and I wanted to share it with colleagues or, or peers at another institution, if they didn't have whatever that infrastructure component was, they were unable to participate without paying some sort of entry fee. Now we can develop these things. We can turn them back over to the community. Uh, a great example is the genomic pipelines that we're working on that are open source because the group can do it far better than just a, our individual group. And, and I, I would far be it for me to ever speak against open source, so I couldn't be more, Plus more one, violent. Plus one, retweet, yeah, exactly. like, <laughs> exactly. okay, and, and so, your thoughts. But, but to me, technologically, and actually it, 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 it connects to the question that, that was asked just a minute ago, is that I think the things that I'm seeing develop here and that I think is still really exciting and needs to go faster is this whole framework around metadata. Mm -hmm. So so it's one thing, I mean, the good news is that we can expeditiously bring huge volumes of data data into common electronic frameworks where we can get access to it, but especially in our universe where the data is so heterogeneous, it's represented in multiple forms, it's uh, it, knowing data about the data, it, well, and some of it's healthcare data, so you need to know data provenance, you need to know who has access controls, so data about data, and I know it's not a particularly sexy thing because it doesn't show up on cute curves and other things like that. Yeah, but, yeah, no, but, you got to have addressability of data, you got to yep. be able to move data around, have it be addressable, yep. if you want to tune the telescope in, you got to maybe pull in some contextual data that yep. focuses in on the problem, right? I mean, yep. I know we got time sync, time sync here with the uh, with the clock, but I asked one final question. For the folks watching that might be in the enterprise space, you guys are doing some cutting edge research, you got access to resources, the big brains at Arizona State University, so a lot of great stuff happening. What one thing would you say to them that's been flipped upside down? In any new paradigm that goes on, there's always one thing that just, it could be architectural, could be business, what architectural thing would you say has been flipped upside down his head, and what kind of business logic well, has so been flipped I'll, I'll try to say this quick, because I, there are some granular pieces that you see continue to change in the ecosystem that are exciting, but I think the, the one most exciting piece that, that I would look at is just kind of the redefinition redef of the scientific model, where we used to come up with a hypothesis and go out and collect data and then run tests against it. Now all the data exists, and as Ken had said, we need to figure out what questions we can ask and what questions are even, even askable, right? That's exciting stuff. Yeah, I would actually say the, the advent of data science as a full partner of a scientific uh, industry. I mean, we, we talk about the development of computational fields within yeah. each industry, but what I think is actually sort of interesting is now almost, not quite there yet, but almost an equal seat at the table now would be data scientists as a mature domain in and of itself uh, that may, hopefully, you know, with that, uh, when we talk about the uh, Gray's fourth paradigm of science, we're actually now literally doing work around data as opposed to generating the data actually is the science itself. Data so. is the code, data is the develop environment. Guys, thanks so much for Thank sharing you. your story. One, at Hadoop Summit for the whole crowd here, but also coming on theCUBE yeah, and, and sharing them. We're, we're like a telescope, getting the data here from the experts. Thanks so much for sharing Excellent. your story. It's a great story. Real life example of how work is being done, certainly with breast cancer and cancer and other research. Just amazing application that changes the game. Again, thank you. You're watching theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with George Gilbert. We'll be right back with more CUBE coverage from SiliconANGLE Media after this short break.